Hi, I'm Catherine Parento. And I'm Athena Trio. And today we're going to talk to you guys about the transitioning zone. So how to move forward after you hit your third shot drop or your fifth shot drop. And also the proper technique from the transitioning zone. All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about is how to hit your transitioning shot. So basically your fifth shot drop, after you hit a third shot drop, you move all the way here mid-court and you're stuck in the transitioning zone here. You're trying to reset the ball. My goal here is to try to have Athena's contact point below her knees. That means that it's a green zone for me. That means if her contact point is below her knees, that's a good time for me to move forward following that ball. If her contact point is anywhere between her knees to and higher, I would stay where I am and then wait for a, another ball, another chance to get up to that kitchen line. So let me just talk briefly here about how to hit a good transitioning um, shot here, your fifth shot drop. So what's really important is your position. You want to make sure you're pretty wide here and you stay low. Think about like a baseball catcher. If you, you watch them, you'd never see like them pretty high on their legs. They're really going to get into that position and stay down. That's really important when you're here, right here, you want to make sure you're staying down because most of the balls are probably going to come right towards your feet. If you're a little bit more up and again, you're expecting the ball to be down, a lot of the time you end up kind of reaching for the ball and you just kind of flick your wrist here. But again, if you go a little bit lower with your legs, it's a lot easier for you to keep control of your paddle face and keep control of your body. If Catherine is in that transition area, and I hit a ball and I'm aiming for her chest, because she's so close to the baseline, it's very unlikely that that ball stays in if I'm hitting it really hard. So once you're in that transition area, your natural ready stance should be kind of low, exactly like Catherine was describing, because if the ball is coming to your chest, it's probably not staying in and not a ball that you want to hit. So if the ball bounces and I'm in the transitioning here area, I'm going to follow through a little bit longer just because once the ball hits the ground it lost a little bit of speed so I need to add a little bit more behind my ball so you're gonna see my follow through is a little bit longer than if I were to take the ball out of the air and hit it so let's do a few example out of the air it's almost like a block with a little bit of a push but way less than if it were to bounce in front of me oops not enough here, my, my grip is pretty loose. If it's super tight, it's going to be very hard for me to keep it under control. I might not be able to absorb the ball. Here, loose grip. If you feel like you're, you're going to miss the ball, you want to go with your depth. You want to focus on keeping it deeper because you can always have another chance to move forward. You can always hit a seven ball, seven shot, nine shot before you move forward. Not like that. So I think one of the things that's also important to touch on is what we see is you get in that transition area. You're panicking because you feel like you're on defense and you feel like you're in trouble. And so what happens when you're in that transition area is because you're afraid, your swings get really big. And so if Catherine can just demonstrate for a second what we see a lot of the times when you're freaking out and kind of in that transition area in trouble. And so Catherine's taking these huge swings. And so when she's taking these huge swings because she's afraid and, and scared, it makes it really difficult for her to get out of that defensive position because she's giving that ball too much energy. And so she's giving me balls over and over that are high that I can continuously attack and be aggressive with, right? But the goal is, can you try to remain calm so your body weight is staying forward when you're in that position, right? Because if my body weight goes backward, what happens to my paddle face? It goes up. So that means that ball is also going to go up and give your opponent a ball again that they can attack. So try to keep that body weight forward and try to control the length of those swings so that you're able to get yourself out of that defensive position, right? Kind of like if you see Catherine, especially when she was taking those balls out of the air, those strokes have very little push behind them because I'm already providing her with all that energy, right? She's just trying to absorb the energy so that she can get that ball into that red zone, which allows her to move forward. So a lot of people are asking me, like, how do you know 
if you should just slam it from here or if you just should, you know, keep on dropping it back in the kitchen. It really depends on their contact point first, but also what do they do after their contact point is down here? Do they try to keep me back? If they try to keep me back, maybe I'll get a chance to hit it above the net, which gives me a chance to be more aggressive. So let's do a few different scenarios where you're going to see if I made a good, if I made a good decision on, you know, on a different balls. So let's see. It's my fish shot here. Three. All right. So All right. That's scenario. what we were going to do. I was ready. I wanted that one hand back in. Um, see that. So I hit a pretty good fist, right? Her contact point was down here. I saw her head going down and she tried to keep me back. So by doing that, I was able to take the following shot and I was above the net. So I just decided to pull even more the trigger or be more aggressive in that shot. So let's try another scenario here. Whoops. That was a mean feed. Hey, I had to do something. You showed me up on the last one. So here, yellow. Okay. Red. All right. She played a, a safe game there. So now there's nothing we can do. It's neutral. We just start the point from the kitchen line. All right. Last scenario here that we're going to show you. So here, yellow, oops, I said a green. Again, so I'm staying until I have the right ball to move forward and I missed it. She did a good job on keeping me back. But these are different scenarios here where, again, after your fifth shot drop, if you don't know if you should be aggressive or not, think about the height. If it's above the net, yes, you can take it and just be more aggressive, just as long as your weight, your body weight is going forward following that shot. Um, if you're you hit an amazing fish shot drop, but for some reason they hit an even better shot and you find yourself hitting the next shot in your red zone, then I would just play it safe and just play it being back and it's a neutral game now. Another thing that we see a lot when people play in general amateur and even at professional levels, we kind of forget to stop our feet on our way up. So if I hit a good fish shot drop, I gotta make sure even though I hit a very nice third shot drop, I gotta make sure I stop my feet on my way up. Okay, so if I don't stop my feet, then I'm going to be late for the next ball. So let's just do a few different scenarios here and see how it goes. You want to start at the baseline? Sure. So I'll start from the baseline, hitting a third shot drop. I'm going to make sure I stop my feet right before... Oh, I stopped too early. But right before Athena makes contact with the ball. If I stop as she's hitting the ball, it's too late. I'm going to be late for the following ball. So let's see. Let's do the wrong one. So I'm going to stop too late. This is what happens. I'm just kidding. But so what happened there? I hit not necessarily a great third shot drop, uh, but my feet stop a little bit too late. And it's just super hard to time it, you know, if you stop too late. And also it's super hard to move sideways. So let's see if I do it correctly this time, even though I'm going to make it look my third shot drop is not going to be great. But let's see how I'm doing with my footwork here. So now you can tell or see how much easier that was for me to move forward, uh, even though I didn't hit the greatest third shot drop of all time, but I was able to have plenty of time to move sideways if I had to and to just focus on my next shot. A great drill that you can do with your doubles partner is starting here. You have one person starting in the transitioning zone here and your partner can be right behind the kitchen line. The person who's up behind the kitchen line is going to feed a mean feed and the other one has to get out of trouble, okay? And then you can practice on resetting, on your fifth shot drop, um, and you can also practice on moving forward, on your split step, the footwork part of it too. That was that a very nice, a mean enough feed. I don't like being mean to you. <laughs> oh, oh, that wrist it. All right, let's do one more. So you can do a few more. Whoa, I had it. One, one. So you can keep track of the points too. It just makes it more competitive. That's one way to stay focused and really focus on playing with a purpose. So I don't I think I... that we should keep track of points. <laughs> yeah, maybe if you're a couple, don't keep track of the points. Uh, but after a few... You know, you can play a game up to 11, a game up to 7. Just make sure you alternate after a few minutes. So I'm going to be doing the same thing here. I'm going to feed a mean feed. And Athena is going to try to get out of trouble here. Let's see. Let's do one. We're point. not okay. Since being... it's 1-1. One, one. 
You're not okay being mean to me, are you? A little bit more than you. <laughs> Nice. Oh. oh, I was backing up. I was ready for that attack. I was in the red zone and I went for it. 2-1. Two, 2-1? One. Two, one? That was very keeping score. <laughs> He can't earn you that. All right, let's Come finish on. it that way. Tie. 2-2. Two, two. I think that's good enough. Thank you for watching your video in the transitioning zone. I hope you guys will feel more comfortable moving forward when you're stuck in the transitioning zone. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you have any questions, don't forget to comment below. <laughs> Hi, I'm Catherine Parento. And I'm Athena Trio. And today we're going to talk about the transitioning... Transitioning... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Talking too fast. And if you have any questions, don't forget to comment below. <laughs> you forgot. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we had like five conversations after we said the tapping paddles. <laughs>